Hello everyone, welcome back to the Tendi Nolan YouTube channel, and today I want to talk about the CCM EFLEX 5 goalie leg pads. Um, so in my last video I talked about the CCM EFLEX 5 blocker, as well as the CCM EFLEX 5 catcher, which I have right here. Um, in that video, I think I did an okay job of reviewing them, but I don't feel that I did a great job of showing you certain parts. For example, the closure on the catch glove. So if I close it up, I, I like to tighten this strap here, as I mentioned in that video. So what I was talking about is the closure here. So hopefully you can see that there. And so the closure here is pretty good. Um, for a game ready, I would expect a little bit more closure, but let's say you got it, you use some um, glove breaking methods, and you got it to close really, really well, like here. You can see that the holes are very small. For example, right here in the T, the puck is not escaping this. I can, can't even get my pinky in there, which is great. And down here, a puck is absolutely not escaping this. Um, that gap there. Very minor. Especially if you catch the puck in the actual pocket here, as you hopefully will. Um, but yeah, getting right into the blocker. One thing I did not show you, or at least didn't show very well, is the wrist mobility and just the, like, wideness of this. So, and this Velcro here moves that's even more mobile there you get a lot of wrist movement there so very adjustable which is very good i feel ccm has done some really good job on their blocker so far like just all over and next let's get into the main topic of this video which is the ccm eflex 5 goalie leg pad so this is a pro pad pro level pad as well as legitimately pro as it was used in the WHL. As you can see, this lacing here represents that it was used by a pro and pro stock. I think overall, just for an overview, this pad is a very good pad. It's the first CCM pad I've had in a while since the E2, uh, excuse me, P2.9, Premier 2.9, which was the, which was an intermediate pad. Um, the quality on that was not great. I noticed that here, it was kind of odd, this piece just here broke apart, so it was like a large gap there, which was unfortunate, there's a large skate cut, partially due to use, but yeah, so anyways, um, looking into the quality of these pads, um, these pads were used for four months pretty heavily by WHL goaltender Dante G. Nuzzi. Um as you can see there's the embroidery on the boot right there, hopefully you can see that. Um, and so there's some very minor wear here, like right on the sliding surface there, um, this white mark there, which I believe is just from use. Um, there's also some other minor, likely from skate cuts, like up here on the thigh rise, you can see there. And speaking of the top binding and bottom binding, which mostly, I think, in my opinion, wears the most. So there's some wear there, very minor as well as some very mi even more minor wear on this side, which is where you might rest your glove. Um, on this side, it would be your blocker, so there would be less wear here. So here on the toe is, in my opinion, where there's the most wear on a pad, um, which is still quite minor. So I actually question if, because it's a WHL team, they do have a, an equipment manager so I wonder if the bindings were replaced on these pads. Because um, the wear is very minor. So here there's some pretty minor wear. That's on the inside there. Just like how on the other pad, or excuse me, this is on the outside. So this, I would say this has a little bit more wear on the outside. If you can see that. Than the other pad. And then on the inside sliding, sliding surface, excuse me. There is a bit more wear here, and this is the left pad, so as a um, left-hand catching goaltender, that's where the catching glove will be sitting, is along this top binding here. And then, let's see, for that wear down by the boot there, on the other side there's a very small, like, nick in it. Um, this is a much larger wear spot, it's just from rubbing. Um, it has not affected slideability, I don't think. 
and it was already there when I purchased these pads. And so there's very little wear other than like very minor skate cuts. Like this is one of the larger skate cuts. Um, it didn't actually cut through the material. It was more just took off some of the weave um, material there. And then so you get into the actual specs of this pad. So it's quite stiff. I believe there is one break here and there may be another break just slightly above the knee as on this inner sliding surface it would represent two internal breaks. Um, but I'm not sure because this has a pro stiff thigh rise. So as you can see, like if I'm just trying to flex that, there's very little flex there as some pads are very soft up there. And then one external break, as you can see, there's not another one here. And it has a very soft boot, which works for me. It's not the softest boot in the world, I don't think, but I do, it definitely works for me. And so for the knee block here, um, which you can see that, pushing out and then pulling in, there's more movement, definitely more movement inwards than outwards, but the outward movement is very minimal because of this lace here, like I, sh like I talked about earlier, that pro lace there. And the, but either way, I think that with a, as a more reactive pad, the movement actually, I think, helps me a little bit. I feel that it doesn't aff definitely doesn't affect playing negatively, that's for sure. And then getting into the strapping, he does not have an outer knee wing. Make sure you can see that, yep. Does not have an outer knee wing. And so this is immediately strapped down to the um, calf wrap there. And then this is, this, this is a strap that's on all the pads, um, I believe. And then here's the tight fit strapping. So this is very adjustable. If you would like, if you purchase these pads, whether um, new or used, you can remove like the actual elastic straps themselves. And it still has this in there that's not removable, at least not easily. You would have to do a lot of cutting <laughs> to, get at, to get that out of there. A lot of pad surgery, as I like to call it. And but it is possible. So the pad overall is pretty tight fitting, which is what I prefer, but there is a lot of adjustability here. Um, and stock, I believe it's only like one strap here, and which would cut off oh, like this, hopefully you can see that, like this part of it and lower part. So it's more just one strap that comes across, which, um, I believe can be adjusted. Um, but overall, this pad is a very, very high quality pad, I think. Um, I, my expectations were not extremely, extremely high, as the split with Lefebvre had a lot of people concerned in terms of the quality of the pads. Um, it's also a pro unit, so whether that's a different factory or what, I'm not quite sure. So the quality may be different from a retail unit, but I don't think it would vary that much. Um, as it's the same materials and everything, but um, a lot of people are not the biggest fan of the graphic. The graphic to me isn't all that bad because it like I don't think it matters all that much. So let me grab this glove and blocker here. Um, I think this set, in terms of matching all the pieces of gear, this is the best that could be done because it's just. It's all one color, all solid color, and very few color zones are actually used for a different color. So here, and then there's this on the back, which represents um, this piece, which is actually very interesting. Let me get that more on camera, sorry. Um, very interesting because, you know, other than the ultrasonic, you really don't see any branding done in the leg channel like this. Um, and I believe the future Bauer Mock pad will have that as well, but that's not out yet. Um, at least not released to the public yet. Um, but yeah, so I think that the graphic isn't terrible. Um, in terms of matching the glove, it could be done better, as like most people do not hold their glove like this, where the CCM logo would be upright, but it's, that's a very minor thing. I don't think it matters all that much, but overall... Other than the possibly questionable, questionable graphic, the pads are very, very good. Um, 
they really perform up to my expectations. The sliding is very good. The quality seems to be very good. And they are slightly on the heavier side. That is possibly due to the Pro Stiff Thigh Rise. Um, I'm not quite sure. Looking at the pads, I did forget to mention one thing, which is possibly the most evolutionary pad, uh, like aspect on these pads, which is the center knee roll, which is an exposed um, molded foam, which has been talked about quite a bit lately since these pads came out. Um, so what this is, is an exposed molded foam. So as you can see, it's kind of a different color than um, the weave material around it. And as this is a more darker red, this is a more lighter red. And so they really wanted to show off this new technology, which is partially why the graphic is kind of divided in a kind of an odd way. But I think it's for the better and better for the future of goaltending as this is a very interesting piece. So this is a control rebound pad. What that means is the foam in the face is softer, control, so you can control the rebounds off, coming off of it, and or you can get the Max Rebound Plus, which is stock on the CCM Access pad. And the Max Rebound is, like in the name, Max, right? You get to, getting the maximum rebound, so it would go out the furthest. Um, and so I think that this molded knee roll, the molded um, foam, I'm not quite sure if it changes with the... Um, face foam, but I think it matches the control rebound the most. It is slightly softer, um, and then on the other knee rolls, it's, I would say, it's about the same. Um, of course, with loose material on the knee roll. I believe they are all molded foams. Um, I think the rebound, it's, when I got it, I noticed the control rebound um, almost right away, and I was slightly concerned actually because I don't want rebounds that would put me in an awkward situation, but they actually kick out rebounds pretty far for what I thought it was going to be. Um, so overall this pad is very good, so if you purchase a stock unit, unit, excuse me, a stock unit with the control rebound, you should not be concerned about it putting, in you, putting you in awkward situations. Of course, if you would prefer to get larger rebounds, like, um, I don't know if it's quite on the level of barrel rebounds, but the Max Rebound Plus, it would be more for you if you want really, really large rebounds. But overall, the pads work very well for me, and if you have any questions about them, please let me know in the comments, and or if you have any concerns about the video or things that I can improve on, please let me know. And if I missed anything, let me know and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you very much for watching and see you all later. Goodbye.